Hey, good afternoon, <clears throat> and welcome back to Question and Sense with me, Matt. How you doing? Guess what? Yep, it's gone. Yes. Negotiated my, negotiated my way out of the deal. Obviously, I'm back at work full time. My uh, partner, my wife, she's back at work full time. Um, the young lad isn't back at school yet. Um, but we don't know really what's going to happen on that front. However, cut to the chase. Um, the hat is no longer in effect. I can't really, it doesn't really feel like lockdown when I'm going out to work all the time. So um, that's the end of that. Anywho, um, without too much more waffle, let's get into review. Obviously, as I've said, I'm back at work full time, so time is becoming a little bit more tricky. Um, but I want to talk to you today about another one from the House of Rasasi. Now, I got this one a long time ago, which is Le Yukawam. And I love it. I'm really, really impressed with this one. This is a complete and utter clone of Tuscan leather from Tom Ford. Um, it's a lot cheaper than Tuscan leather, and it's absolutely beautiful. And it's amazingly huge. It's a real, real big hitter. Um, so I've obviously got a lot of faith in Rosasi. Um, you know, they come from Dubai. They've been around, I think, since the 70s. Churned out lots and lots of perfume. So I thought, let's try and um, have a go at some of their originals. Now, um, one of the subscribers, one of you lovely lot, recommended one from Rosasi, um, one of the Casamat uh, collections. So I looked at them, and the one that was recommended is kind of like a, not a clone, but a, an equivalent, shall we say, of um, Gerard's More Than Words, which is one of my favourite fragrances. Now, I didn't particularly want to go for that one because I've got quite a lot of More Than Words, and I enjoy wearing it. And I will get round to doing it, but I thought I'd have a look at, look at some of the others. There are four of the Casamat range that have been, or collection that have been released. Uh, one, I think, is a straight-up clone of uh, BR540. But I took a punt on one called Ebar. Now, I've had it a while, um, and I've been sort of kind of not really wearing it very often because it's just, I don't know, it's a bit too hot. So let's have a look at the bottle. First of all, here, here it is. Look at that, it's got a little tassel on it. It's actually really heavy glass. The cap is really nice, actually. The presentation, these are slightly more expensive than sort of like your typical kind of cheapy Middle, and East, Middle Eastern fragrances. These aren't cheap at all, really. I got this in a sale from Notino, and it was under 30 pounds, but normally it retails for a lot more than that. Um, I think you can probably get them on eBay, but then there's all sorts of shipping issues and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure they are safe to buy on eBay because I, I haven't heard any anything you know too much about cloning them. And I think they're either 65 or 70 mil bottles, so they're not the biggest of bottles, but the you know the uh, the bottles themselves are lovely. They're really really good presentation. It comes in just a normal box, so not nothing to be excited about there. So I've had this a little while. I've worn it around the house a few times and um, sort of more than a few times actually and I wore it to work not yesterday the day before obviously I'm wearing it today and I will have a little spray for the purposes of the review as you would expect now um, it's an interesting fragrance if we have a look at the notes um, and then we will talk a bit more about you know what I get out of it in terms of performance how it smells etc etc so I will say the notes are a little bit misleading. This is on the top, you have lemon and you have green apple. Then in the heart, we have lotus, we have iris, we have jasmine, and we have Damascus rose. And then on the base, we have vanilla, praline, tonka bean, and musk. Now, I was expecting possibly something, when I read that there was a sort of, you know, apple at the top, I was expecting maybe something in the world of... Um, Frederick Mao's The Promise or, you know, Oman Luxuries, Oud Aquilaria. Didn't get that at all. So, you know, it was a blind buy, something I'm trying not to do, but obviously occasionally the old blind buy does get through. So I thought I'd give it a go. Let's have a little spray now, and then I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Um, the spray is perfectly functional. This is a good perfume. It's a good, you know, good presentation, should I say. Right. This is not what you think you're going to get. Obviously, the base and the middle kind of are building up to something quite sweet. But because there's sort of, you know, you associate lemon and green apple as being quite sharp and citrusy, I don't get that. I get, this is not a complicated fragrance at all. It's, you do get a little bit of citrus and you can kind of make out an apple, but it's not like a crisp apple. It's not a sharp apple. It's not, um, you know, a lot of fragrances that use apple, it's very, very recognisable as an apple. What happens, especially to me, is everything, all the base, the middle and the top, all seem to charge out at once. So you get a really, really sweet, 
bomb. And when I first sprayed it, I was a bit, ah, it's another Herbapura clone, of which I've got you know, far too many. And I, if it had been just a straight Herbapura, Herbapura clone, I would have been really disappointed. Why would, you know, why do we need yet another um, Suspiro Herbapura clone? Or it's not even Suspiro anymore, is it? Another Geroff Herbapura clone. But this isn't. It's in the same world, though, don't get me wrong. You get this amazing sweetness. It's it's probably too sweet for me, um, in all honesty, but I do enjoy a sweet fragrance now and again, so it's not one that I'm going to wear a great deal. But with this combination of everything coming out, you, you know, there's some florals in here, but they, don't, they get kind of swamped in the sweetness of everything. The vanilla, the praline, the tonka, and the musk, although they're on the base, they kind of jump straight to the top, so you get this little sharpness, this little sharp burst of citrus as it explodes out. And you do get a kind of a fruitiness from the apple, but I'm not getting an apple as such. I'm getting a fruit, if you know what I mean. Um, iris is quite buttery and creamy to me quite often anyway, um, and you certainly get that. I don't really pick up on any rose at all. It all seems to be about a little citrus opening and then the heavy, the big guns from the base come flying up and the musks. The musks become more apparent as time goes by. But because this is so sweet, the praline and the vanilla, and obviously when you've got vanilla and tonka bean together, you've got an, almost like an overload of that. They just seem to dominate so much. And I think there's something, for me personally, there's something missing. Don't get me wrong, I like the perfume, it's a pleasurable wear, but I wish there was something in there just a little sharper, a little something else to break it. Because what you get is you get a very sweet linear fragrance. Now, when I say linear, I'm it's going to be a little bit of a contradiction here because, you know, I like fragrances that take you on a journey and they shine and they do this and, you know, how it starts to how it ends are completely different. This isn't the case here. This does smell pretty much the same throughout its its um, its life. But what it does do is it, it doesn't deviate from its pattern, but it does show off the other notes a little bit at a time. So, you know, it's always sweet. It's always almost gourmandish. It's to me, it's like almost like some kind of um, caramel, like a fruity caramel bar or a fruity caramel ice cream. That's what I'm getting from this. And if you like that kind of thing, it's perfect. But I think this combination of vanilla, tonka bean, musk, and maybe it's the jasmine, I'm not entirely sure, just gives it that little twist that kind of gives me, like if you had, uh, I don't know, um, I wouldn't even say an apple chocolate or something like that. It almost gives me like an orangey feel. So you get this kind of orangey caramel, effectively, is, is what I get from it. Um, now, when you first spray it, it's quite big. It punches out all over the shop, and then it dies off very, very quickly. It's not big, for, not, not big on projection at all, but it does sit quite close to the skin. It's not a skin scent, it's above that, and you'll find you'll get little wafts of it. When I first got it, I sprayed it quite heavily in the house in the evening after dinner, and it was like, oh, bloody hell, and it followed me around the house everywhere, and I thought, okay, there's some, some pretty good sillage, but that died off quite quickly as well. But throughout the entire evening, I was getting little wafts of it, um, and then when I woke up in the morning, I could still smell it very strongly in my chest and on my arms, so I thought, well, that's good. You know, that's a good sort of 10 hours. Excellent performance, I thought, really, really good. Um, I wore it again around the house in the when well, I was off. I wore it around the house in the day, and it seemed to last me all day. So that was pretty good. I was wasn't complaining about it. And then I wore it to work. Now, bearing in mind, in London at the moment, we have got a massive heat wave on, and I was working for you know for my entire shift. I was outside, um, and when I, I applied it before I left to work, I left for work very early in the morning, and it was quite cool, and it smelled lovely. Um, and then when I got back from work, kind of lunchtime, it, it had gone completely. So my my you know my thinking is. I don't think it's the perfume's fault. I don't think there's anything wrong with the longevity of it, but what I will say is it does not cope well with the heat. And I've got quite a few perfumes like that, so it's that's not out of the ordinary. You know, some frags are designed to, you know, to, to perform better in colder weather. And I think when it does get cold, this is gonna be absolutely awesome. It's a, a real sweet, fruity, fun fragrance. You know, don't take this seriously at all. It's, um, for me, sort of a casual, colder day kind of thing. I like, sweet fruity fragrances in hot weather and there are, i have got plenty that cope with it very very well um, but this one in in the heat it just doesn't do a great job it, it it dissipates so quickly from my skin so this could be you know my skin issue or you know my skin combination of the heat has given it pretty grim performance outside in this weather but when it's worn uh, indoors it seems to last a very long time softly it's a warming fragrance i think it is going to be absolutely stunning in the winter because 
I love these constant little whiffs of it. You know, every time you move, you just are oh, you're aware of it. Um, and if you you know you don't smell it constantly, so if you you bring your nose to your to your wrist to smell it, when you get to about here, you, you you're picking it up. So it's still kicking out. You're not like pushing your nose into your skin to try and find it. It's not like that. It has got you know a bit more presence than that. But it's it's a nice one. I think in you know it'll be a good office scent if you don't mind smelling that sweet because it is incredibly sweet. Um, but you know if you're going to wear it at work or in the office or something like that, you're not choking anybody out. It just hasn't got that kind of makeup. So I'm I'm impressed with it. It's probably a really good intimate fragrance and it's good for date nights or maybe sort of um, you know going out for a meal that kind of thing. I don't know if I would though because I find that too sweet. And if I'm going out for an evening or you know if I'm, me and my wife are going out to do something nice. I wouldn't wear something sweet. I tend to wear something either completely mental or something a bit more kind of grown up. This is a fun frag. This is kind of like maybe a cold winter's evening going to the pub or, you know, a nice walk in the autumn or something like that. I think it'll be perfect for that if you want that kind of sweet, fruity um, vibe. And, you know, sometimes a sweet, fruity, um, almost, almost gourmandish sort of fruitiness is quite nice. It's quite uplifting. It makes you, you know, it's quite cheery. But to me... Um, I don't wear those fragrances very often. Um, I enjoy them when I do, don't get me wrong, but they're not, you know, I've, if you've seen seen their videos, you kind of know what I would like. And I don't think Rich is a massive fan of that kind of thing. And also, you know, if I want something sort of sweet and creamy, I'd always, always, always go for Autoparese Seminalis over pretty much everything. So it's, um, I don't know, it's all right. I'm glad it's not an Herba Pura clone. I'm glad it's not like El Haramein Gold, um, sorry, El Haramein Amber Oud Gold Edition, because I've already got that. And to be honest, I love that. I love the, 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 the reason that I prefer the Amber, Amber Oud over this one is because when I spray the Amber Oud, I get a really realistic crystal clear cut lemon, uh, melon, sort of real sharp melony note. And it's so accurate. I can almost tell you it's a garlic melon or it's a, a honeydew melon. With this one, it's a bit of a melange. It's just a bit of a, a syrupy, fruity, um, entrance to, to the perfume if that lemon note was a bit more dialed up or if the apple was a bit sharper or you know a bit more realistic i think it would have improved the perfume but i'm not detracting from the perfume please understand this is not a negative review i do enjoy this i've just got it at the wrong time of year so what i'm going to do is hopefully get around to having another look at it when it's cold i mean it was a bad bad idea really trying to trying to wear it in this weather but you know you've got to know i didn't realize just how poor it would be in the heat but you know to to, to sort of you know combat that when you wear it indoors it really really does last so an interesting one not one that i recommend you rush out and buy at the moment because if you're in any country where it's hot it's not going to do well um, I certainly am really interested to see how it performs in the uh, winter or in the, uh, you know, in the autumn. Maybe at the end of summer, as things start cooling off, um, I'll give it another go then um, and see how it performs. Because I like the smell. It is incredibly sweet, probably too sweet for me in all honesty, but I will wear it. Because every now and again, you know, you just think, oh, I'll have something sweet today. Uh, and, and that's kind of like, you know, the, the opportunity that I'll, I'll get to wear it. It's a fun fragrance. It's not serious. Um, I wouldn't wear it for an interview or anything like that i mean come on but um if you're you know if you're in if your work environment is as such where you know you could wear something sweet then that would be all right for it it's completely unisex um you know males females anyone can wear this i think it's probably going to maybe appeal to uh, a, a younger a younger thruster not us you know grizzly old fragrance enthusiasts i think it's certainly for for a younger person i can see this being on a young guy or a young lady um maybe even a young woman will probably really really enjoy this one it's too sweet for my wife um she's already sort of said oh, no not not that sweet so there you have it that's um rasasi kasama ibar now I will hopefully get a few more from the collection if they come up at a decent price because I'm not paying full whack for them. Um, I think they're good. Um, I think these are going to be in discounters at some. So I think they're quite a new collection, so I'm waiting for them to kind of hit discounters a bit more readily than they are at the moment. Interesting. I'm not blown away by it, but I do like it, and I do think I'm happy to have it in my collection. I won't be moving it on, um, certainly not until I've given it a good trial out in the winter. Anyway, there you go. Trying to get through a few. Um, so hopefully we're going to get a couple of, you'll probably get about three videos done this week, all going to plan. So 
Thank you very much for your time. I hope you guys are all right. I hope you're doing well. Um, thanks for the, obviously, the conversations we've been having. They're very much appreciated. If there's anything else you want to know about this or any of the others, you know, leave a comment below or just hit us up and we will have a natter. Anyway, um, I don't know what's going on in your part of the world, um, but I hope it's, it's good. I hope you're staying safe. I know there's a lot of other craziness going on at the moment, so try and keep your heads down and, and let it all blow over. And then, uh, you know, watch some more videos. Thanks very much for your time. Um, your time is important to you and it's important to me too. And thanks for sharing it. Listen, from me and Rich, thank you very much for your time. Take care. Bye. And we will see you on the next video. Bye.